you have quite a life story. Let's start with your your start in music. What do you think about when you consider what really got you started in the music? Well, you know what? It, it dates back to, to when I was little, man. You know, I, I, I fell in love with the guitar at a very young age, you know, and uh, all my uncles uh, used to, to play, you know, um, the guitars and, and sing and at all our family functions and everything. And that's kind of the first time I saw it. I'm like, you know, wow, I really got to, you know, learn this so I could participate in family functions and everything. So um, I'd have to credit, you know, the, the, the initial start at a very early age to my uncles who I admired that were playing guitar. Guitar, and then I picked up at, at, at the age of eight and started playing myself, uh, self-taught, and just kind of, uh, you know, learned from there and took it from there. Uh, now, you and Chris Daughtry, you guys were close friends. You had your first bands together. Um, pretty cool stuff. Uh, do you guys stay in touch today, and uh, how did that time influence you today? Absolutely. Well, you know what? We um, we, we were uh, good friends. You know, we were introduced. Um, one of my, my bandmates, uh, we had a, 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 you know, a band that we were, we were introduced at uh, uh, when we, I think, were in the ninth grade or tenth grade in, in high school. And uh, we were looking for an actual singer to fit the style of music that we were trying to do. And at the time, you know, uh, Robert Nesbitt, which was my, my, my bandmate, uh, he was like, oh, we have this kid, uh, Chris Daughtry, in our um, drama class. And uh, he's got a really great voice. I think we should bring him over. So, you know, we brought him into my garage, which where we practice and everything. And I watched him, uh, you know, play his first guitar chords and everything like that when he when he was new into the music thing. And, um, you know, we had a, a band in which they, you know, kind of progressed. And he moved to North Carolina and I moved to New Jersey. So, um, you know, we stayed in touch, uh, you know, as of, as of late. You know, we go back and forth via text. And every time he's in town in New Jersey touring, we, we try to get together both of our schedules are a little crazy but you know we're, we're there in thought and uh, you know he supports what I'm doing and I obviously am proud of him and I support what he's doing so it's a it's a really cool thing yeah very cool story now uh, your the EP is creating uh, uh, quite a buzz out there it has a really cool sound you have some cool guests on there uh, can you talk about the music its origins how you got to this point um, I did hear the song money or me featuring King Dave off the, yes. off the hook song. So yeah, absolutely. Well, you know what? It was um, it, it was great. You know, as of recently, you know, I, you know, I'm a vice president of a bank. You know, and uh, that's kind of the the way that you know, with my my father passing away, and you know, me graduating, you know, college, I kind of went right into to trying to make money to help support my mom, my sister, and everything. So I didn't really get to have the luxury of, of being able to pursue anything in the entertainment industry just because it just wasn't you know, lucrative and, and what I needed to, to, to have to sustain and support uh, my family. So I, I went right into banking and everything. And then, you know, as of recently, um, you know, some, some time has freed up. I started really, you know, now pursuing my dream of, of doing music um, since everything's kind of turnkey at the bank. And, um, you know, over the last seven, several months, I focused on my own solo project. And uh, once I started hitting, you know, um, the number one artist, uh, you know, on, on Reverb Nation and the world, and I, you know, I got, you know, uh, you know, uh, voted as um, the, uh, the the top, uh, the top, um, oh, the hottest artist of 2013 from PBS Entertainment. You know, I started getting like, you know, cool things like, you know, oh, do you want to, you know, have your EP featured in uh, in in the Grammy Award uh, nominees lavish those gift baskets that the nominees get. And um, for me, I was like, you know, absolutely. But there was one problem. I didn't have an EP done. You know, I only right. had, you know, a couple singles. So, you know, it was good because, you know, they gave me a deadline. So within, you know, uh, a month time, I, I, I wrote more songs. I recorded them. I, um, I got them mastered by Peter Dole um, from Universal Studios, who's, you know, an unbelievable sound engineer, and got them printed and got them over to the, to the Grammy Awards in time for the, uh, for the show which was great. So now I have a finished EP and it is getting a lot of buzz and um, I do have um, some, some great, you know, uh, talent on there. I have one uh, that I just released, um, the Money or Me version uh, with Jim Jones, which is, you know, very uh, famous hip-hop artist and uh, he's really big in the uh, entertainment industry. So I, um, I'm very happy about that because I'm also a huge fan of his, you know. Right. And um, I also have... Um, one of the uh, touring members of the Gypsy Kings, I did a track with um, with, with him. Uh, great, great guy um, for a song called Right Heart, Wrong Time. And uh, it, that was really special 
to me, you know. And um, I also did a song with a uh, rising independent artist, which is my producer's daughter, and her name's Alessia Granera. And, um, you know, she did a feature on one of the tracks with me. So I have six songs on the EP. It's doing really well. I mean, going, going from, uh, you know, all the, all the uh, high school dreams and you, you, the musicianship, and then all of a sudden you, uh, you, you change face and you, you go into college and, from what I know, you had seriously awesome grades. Um, can you talk about that part, you know, your college experience and um, what was your final grades? <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah. Well, you know what, at the, at the end of the day, um, you know, something that was always important to my dad, you know, was my grades, you know, that was one thing. I mean, he was always there for me, supported mm-hmm. me through, like, you know, every time we had a, you know, I was very big into sports and football particularly, and he was always at every game and everything, but he always stressed to me the importance of grades, you know. And during high school, I was kind of, you know, just, just you know, you know, B, B plus, kind of average student and everything like that, because, you know, I felt like, you know, you know, school, you know, I was using, you know, school more for a conduit to play football and everything than I was for uh, the actual uh, education part. And um, I think we all that always, yeah, and my dad always stressed to me and everything like that. So my father, when he passed away, and I, I went and and I um, pursued the dream one of playing college football at Montclair State University um, because that was something that was special that we had together, you know, and that was a bond. So that was something that I wanted to do, and I know that was something that was very important to him, you know, to see me do. And um, since he passed away, I felt like, you know, I wanted to make him proud. So not only did I go play college football and everything, um, I, I really um, it took took school serious. You know, I, 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 I bartended, I did everything to pay my way through school while I was playing Division three sports. And um, at the end of the day, I finished up with a 393 uh, GPA. I uh, double majored in, in psychology and business and finance. And um, I actually got an award for the highest grade point average in all Division three schools amongst all sports, guys and girls, for that year. So it was pretty cool. Your financial background, it's serving you well. Um, and you've also been involved with indie and some major film projects. Can you talk about that stuff? Absolutely. Well, the finance has always been a great backbone. It's still my primary thing that I do in life, and it is my bread and butter, and it's what you know helps me you know, fund my own you know music project and everything. But, you know, when you are in banking, I, I used to always get, you know, deals that used to come across my desk to help finance films and people that would come to me, you know, to, to help them get and obtain financing. And, you know, I, I would always try to help them, whether it was successful or not, you know, is a different story. But, you know, through um, developing relationships with these producers that are looking for money and everything like that, they kind of saw my image and, and my demeanor and everything like that. So, you know, a few of them thought that I would be a good fit to uh, play roles in, in some of their films and, you know, some of them being just, you know, kind of like indie films and, and things that were submitted to, you know, various film festivals and stuff, um, like Redemptio is a short and, um, you know, Blind Thoughts and a couple other movies. But, you know, I, um, you know, was casted for, you know, a small role as a police officer in the new Batman uh, movie, The Dark Knight Rises, and um, also a, a small cameo in a film called Sleeping Around uh, that's produced by Leslie Greif that's due out later this year. So, you know, I, I enjoy it. You know, it's still, it's part of the entertainment industry, which I enjoy. And, um, you know, ultimately I'd love to be able to, to merge the two and have some of my music in films and kind of kill two birds with one stone, you know? Sure. Well, I mean, it helps having the look, too. I mean, my wife said, oh, who's that? I said, knock it off. <laughs> uh, your EP, you kind of crossed this already, but your EP was in the gift bag at the Grammys this year. Um, yep, and, and it's due for um, also the uh, MTV Music Awards and the MTV um, Music Video Awards. So it's, it's, it's up for two more award shows as well that'll be, um, you know, uh, taking place this year. And, um, you know, and now I have something which is great just to, you know, preview and I'm, I'm looking to, to get it into, uh, you know, some various uh, stores and, and, and distribution and, and, you know, into places like Barnes and Nobles and things. Well, that's some pretty heady stuff when you got your stuff in uh, the Grammys and MTV's Video Music Awards. That's that's pretty big. Definitely has a cool um, cool uh, way about it. You know that that's that's not the norm. You know, and and it's great because you know it creates this buzz and and it gives uh, you know a lot of um, uh, you know a lot of people are intrigued why and everything like that. And and uh, 
it just makes it great, you know, to uh, to help and, and, and promote myself and everything like that opens up a couple more doors for me. Absolutely. Now, you, you sang with his daughter. Now, can you give me a rundown on uh, Armando, how, how do you say his last name? Uh, uh, Guarnera. Yeah, who is yeah. he and what, what does he do? Well, you know, he is, uh, you know, he's, he's helped me take my career to the next level. And, you know, he's a, um, a producer that, you know, his, his family's 100% Italian, you know, um, great family. They open, uh, they, they, they welcome me with open arms every time I go to record and do something with, uh, you know, espresso and, and food and everything like that, which is amazing. Uh, they're just a wonderful family, but, I mean, just very talented all. The whole family plays music and um, they dates back generation upon generation and this is something that they do for their living you know they, they just do deal uh, in, in the music industry and Armando um, is a member of a band called MMG which is a uh, a great band that, that, that you know backs up uh, you know to the likes of uh, Enrique Iglesias and you know um, playing beat stock in New Jersey and, and, and big venues like that and they also um, get hired for private parties and everything like that and weddings I mean they're a really really talented band and um, Armando is my producer and uh, co-writer for, for you know pretty much all my music and tracks he's pretty much the only one that I record with so um, I admire him he's a you know inspiration to me musically um, and I feel that you know he is the reason that you know I started taking my music more serious and uh, you know I just thank him and his family for, for being there and for helping me absolutely that, that's a great story too now uh, from the looks of things the CP is going to take off in a big way you got the look you've got the voice you got the songs uh have you planned for the future yet on you know what's what's going to happen next well you know i got a lot of exciting projects uh going on you know i um, i'm in talks with uh doing a, another uh, feature with um Dricky graham which is uh you know a, a pretty big hip-hop artist that just went gold for his single snapback and tattoos so i'm excited to, to work on a project with that um my song uh, money or me uh featuring king dave got picked up for uh kendrick lamar's uh mixtape album that he hosts uh for coast to coast mixtapes volume 224 mm -hmm. and i just got picked up uh for a mixtape that um mac miller m-a-c-m-i-l-l-e-r um is hosting and, and that's going to be another mix big mixtape that i'll be featured on um you know i really want to um use this year to continue to grow uh musically uh develop you know my my brand i guess you could say and 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 um keep my my fan base established and engaged uh, by keeping releasing new new music um, and I want to um, get back into the studio which I've already started on writing um, more songs to complete a full album uh, my goal for this year is to to have you know a full full album absolutely man that's great great news uh, it sounds like you have a game plan ready to go so yep. I'm gonna have to get to know and talk to uh, some of the, some of these people that you've mentioned to me because some of them are new names, but it sounds like I should talk to them. So. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Now, lastly, is there anything that you'd like to say to the readers and your fans? Well, you know, I just want to say thank you. You know, thank you for being there and thank you for listening to to, to me, my music, my story. Um, you know, I hope that you know um, at the end of the day that that's what I do it for. You know, I don't do it for you know for for money or anything like that. You know. The, the perks that come with music are great, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's for the, the, the fans that reach out and say, you know, they can relate to my music or maybe my music helped them escape to, you know, another place for, for the, the, the hour or for the day or whatever the case may be. But, um, you know, I, I really value, um, you know, my fans and, and friends and i um, just been blessed, you know, with uh, the amount of people that have, uh, you know, um, taking a liking to what I've been releasing. So I'm just, just thankful. I'll review your 